Hello and welcome back to, to No Pants Profits. This is Richard, still here with No Pants and Hopefully Profits. And believe it or not, we've got a brand new IPO that just popped up in Robin Hood. Uh, this may pop up elsewhere. It is called Iris Energy. I have taken a couple second look to open up some tabs and see exactly what they do. Uh, they say they are Bitcoin mining done right, which is interesting because this is actually Bitcoin mining done right right behind me. These are all uh, solar solar inverters we've got a bunch of batteries there this is a solar charge controller which takes in right from the sun and makes a solar powered bitcoin so it's kind of interesting how that this is not a green screen these are actual units right here so let's go ahead and let's dig into iris energy bitcoin mining done sustainably, done thoughtfully. I'm looking at their website, getting a little bit ahead of myself on my left screen. But let's take a look. Just popped up in Robinhood. Iris Energy is going to range from $25 to $27 a share. Just popped up. Iris Energy is a sustainable Bitcoin miner that owns and operates real estate assets, including a data center infrastructure powered by renewable energy. Its listed name is IREN, and it's Iris Energy Limited. And we've got Iris Energy public filing, and it looks like... Uh, they're going to be expected on 11-17, which is going to be, I believe, next week. Yeah. So next week, it looks like next Friday would be 11-17 there uh, is when they're going to be expected. So what we want to do, we're going to look, we will generally look, when we look at a company, we'll look at the S1. But this is actually registered as a foreign company, so we're going to take a look at the F1. And we'll talk about the difference. I actually pulled it up on Investopedia. They're registered an S1 and an F1, so we can go over that. But I do want to go to their website, and we are going to be looking at their F1, which is like an S1, but for a foreign company. So if we click over, this is Iris Energy, uh, irisenergy.co. I do not believe they are an American company from what I've read, nor does that look like anywhere in America. That kind of looks a little bit like a Norwegian fjord, but they're saying Bitcoin mining done right. Bitcoin mining done sustainably. And we can scroll down. We build, own, and operate data centers using electrical infrastructure to mine Bitcoin. We have mining using the right kind of energy since 2019. Bitcoin mining done right. All right. So this seems to be a green Bitcoin miner. And it looks like that, that they've got powers uh, renewable energy, which is wind power, provides computing infrastructure assets, delivers network security for the Bitcoin network, uh, and turns Bitcoin into cash. And look, they have a video. So let's go ahead. Let's, let's switch so that we can... We can watch this video right here. Maybe. It's like a very clean data center. Nice clean data center there. We'll see where their data centers are in a bit. Ah, Canada. So this may be a Canadian company. Just kind of an idea of their setup that's going on there. Okay. I think we've gotten enough of an idea of kind of what they do, what is going on there. So let's jump off of that. Look around the website a little bit more. Iris files confidentially uh, for NASDAQ direct listing. Iris expands to a enabling like Bitcoin mining. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> 5.2 EH, not mega hash. I, I, I mine in mega hash. So they're, they're mining at a whole nother level. But, you know, I'm a little individual miner. Uh, and let's see how active they are on social media. And I do have the other documents pulled up. But let's see. Iris Energy. They don't have many followers. They got 542 followers. Their last tweet was September 18th, so <laughs> a long time ago on that tweet. Uh, let's check for Facebook. Again, just trying to see what kind, or not Facebook, YouTube. Just trying to see kind of what type of following they have on the social side. They have 36 subscribers on YouTube with no videos. I believe that that one that we watched a few seconds ago was a private unlisted video there. So kind of interesting there. Uh, let's just see what more we can see on their website about 
sustainable Bitcoin mining is just a start. Our time we believe technology can change the world. We believe the fourth industrial re revolution will improve the quality of life for all, so long as done right. Doing it right means scaling sustainably from the start, not bottling it all as an afterthought. Uh, doing it right means leaving greener footprints wherever you go and looking ahead, so we're proud of what we leave behind. Okay, uh, global leaders, and we are global leaders in sustainable Bitcoin mining. We're focused on low-cost renewables. We have long-term security over infrastructure, land, and power supply. We mitigate the downsides, and our management team is well-seasoned. I guess they're like a good steak. They've got salt and pepper on it. We're going to look at their whole document, but I do, I do like to take a look at the website, especially when the company doesn't have much of a social media following. But it is a beautiful website, I do have to say. Our focus on renewable energy, ancillary services to the electricity market. So this does look to be potentially, we looked at one a couple of a, couple, a month or two ago that was, let me see if I can remember who it was. Launched, where are we? Uh, very similar to this. Uh, not nerd wallet, not all, okay. So yeah, this is this seems very similar to Stronghold Digital Mining, which was, a, I, again, I'm not 100% sure. We're going to look at the S1 slash F1, uh, but it looks very similar to Stronghold and Digital Mining here in the in the full perspective and giving us an idea that it's a power company that wants to make some crypto. Um, so yeah, uh, I, think, I think that's what we're really looking at. We're looking at a power company that said we don't want to fully rely on power anymore. Now we're going to make crypto believe it's Canadian. Pretty sure. Yeah. Yep. Looks like some French Canadian names in there. So it looks like it's Canadian. And when we look at the actual document here, so this is the S1. I will link this below, but it is not technically an S1. So we took a look at the website, took a look at social media. They don't have a lot of followers yet. Uh, so they might be a rather new company or a shell company that was formed around a power company in order to actually do that purchasing. Uh, but Iris Energy Limited, uh, and we'll figure out exactly where they are. Uh, oh, actually, they're not in uh, Canada. They're in Sydney, Australia. So they have some facilities in, in Canada, but they are in Sydney, Australia. So kind of interesting. We've got an Australian. Now, when we're looking, we've taken a look at S1 forms in the past. An SEC S1 form is the initial registration form for new securities required by the SEC for public companies that are based in the U.S. Very simple, very broad. And when we look at the SEC Form F1, the SEC Form F1 is a filing with the Securities and Exchange Commission required for registration of certain securities by foreign insurers. SEC Form 1 is required to register securities issued by a foreign issuer, which no other specialized form exists or is authorized. So I believe right now we are looking at very, very similar to an S1, but for a foreign company. So I think we will have very similar documentation, very similar facts, very similar things in this to the other one. So let's take a look. They do have some legal representation in New York, uh, but it does seem like the company is actually based in New South Wales, Sydney, Australia. So kind of an interesting one. And they want to issue 8,269,231 ordinary shares to be priced between $25 and $27 per share. Again, if we take a look, let's just make sure that all matches up. Yep. Just checking the document matches up with the IPO offering to make sure there's no funky business there. You know, they have two classes of shares, uh, and it is probably going to talk about that they are still going to retain the voting rights. Uh, they have some lead brokers that are running that are actually pretty big brokers there. Uh, Galaxy Digital Partners. Compass point. These are all big, uh, big people about the prospectus, unless otherwise indicated by the context. All references in this prospectus to IRS Energy, the company, and arrests refer to the company. Uh, you should rely on the information contained. In, you should rely only on the information contained in this prospectus or contained in any free writing prospectus filed with the SEC. So they're saying, hey, if you're investing, you should only rely on this. I'm making sure, and everything is going to be U.S. dollars, the legal currency of the United States, unless it is referenced to. So they do have uh, U.S., which is where they're filing. But they do have uh, Australian dollars and Canadian dollars. So we may have to do some currency conversions here. Uh, markets, industry, and data. Trademarks, presentation of ordinary shares. All right. Oh, that's nice. They tell us that the different offering prices, how many shares will be issuable, and the total shares after the offering. So that's something that we've not seen before is when you're given this giant range of $25 to $27, like you've got right here in Robinhood, you know, understanding what the different shares sold at that price would be is kind of interesting because they're trying to raise a specific amount of money. So the number of shares may change based on the price. The number of price may change based on the shares. We've got a glossary of terms. Bitcoin. I think we get what a Bitcoin is. 
you know, you can either store it on you know, on a computer, on an exchange, or on one of these little ledger things right here. You can actually store your Bitcoin on. A block is a bundle of transactions, so that's a block of the Bitcoin. Blockchain is the underlying technology. Cryptocurrency or digital asset. The difficulty, Bitcoin has gotten far more difficult to mine. All of my mining stuff back here that I use actually mines Ethereum. So it is mining Ethereum, not mining Bitcoin, because Bitcoin's a little too hard to mine at home. It makes a lot of heat and stuff like that. And you do need specialized equipment like an ASIC miner to actually mine Bitcoin at home. Uh, and extra extra hash per second uh, <laughs> That is a lot faster than a mega hash per second. So I'm running about 500 mega hash per second behind me, and this is running at uh, <laughs> lots of extra hashes. Uh, a fork is just when they change. Uh, one of the most recent forks was the Cardano fork. Something come up because the Ethereum fork, where mining is not going to be as relevant when Ethereum forks to a proof of stake currency. Hash, miner, mining, mining pools. Megawatts, this electricity, Bitcoin network, petahash per second. So we got one quadrillion versus one quintillion. These numbers are getting big. Proof of work. Okay. Proof of stake. Kind of things we've already talked about. Public key or private key. A wallet, which is a place to store crypto, which can either be, say, an app on your phone. A wallet, something Robinhood doesn't have right now. So if you have Robinhood, you don't have a crypto wallet. Even if you have crypto, it can be physical wallet or it can be a application that lives on your computer or lives with a third party with an exchange like Coinbase or someone like that. So we are a Bitcoin mining company. Company. We build, own, and operate a data center and electrical infrastructure for the mining of Bitcoin, primarily powered by renewable energy. We target entry into reasons where there's low-cost, abundant, attractive renewable energy sources. In January 2020, we acquired our first site in British Columbia, Canada, A, eh? uh, from PodTech Innovation, uh, certain of its related parties. This site is connected to a British Columbia Hydro and Power Authority and is sourced from clean and renewable sources. The data center, which has been operating since 2019, has approximately 30 megawatt hours of capacity and has an operating hash rate of approximately 0.7 eh per second as of october 1st 2021 uh so they have a conditional and unconditional rights to a number of sites across british columbia uh texas asia pacific which is kind of interesting it must be outside of china because china's banned bitcoin well china's banned Bitcoin mining. We know it's still going on, uh, over which they're currently pursuing the development. These sites are anticipated to support our operations and have multiple nameplate hash rate capacity of 15.2 EH per second. So uh, if you do hear some noise in the background, I didn't because I thought it was relevant, but I didn't actually turn off my Bitcoin miners. I generally will turn off the Bitcoin miners when I shoot a video, but I said, you know, let's hear what it actually sounds like in a data center. We do have a noise canceling microphone, so you may not hear it quite as loud. Our mining operations generate revenue by earning Bitcoin through a combination of block rewards and transaction fees from the operation of specialized computers, ASICs, uh, and exchanging these Bitcoins for currencies, US dollars or Canadian dollars on a daily basis. So they're mining, they're cashing out, they've taken their tendies. If you're familiar with tendies, cash out, take tendies, eat tendies, because dollars mean nothing and chicken tenders are the currency of the future. That's what tendies mean if you're watching this for the first time. You know, inflation and stuff like that, but chicken tenders are here to stay. Uh, as of September 30th, we entered into binding hardware purchase with Bitman Technologies, who makes, yeah, it is the leading Bitcoin mining hardware to get more anti-miners. So chip shortages are going on and things like that. And, you know, they're still purchasing some anti-miners and they're going to get in a lot of anti-miners. Again, I think they kind of are a newer company, a power company. We've been mining Bitcoin since 2019. We liquidate all Bitcoin, so we don't hold any Bitcoin on our balance sheet. So they are mine cash, mine cash, mine cash, mine cash, mine cash, mine cash, mine cash. So they have not really appreciated with the price of Bitcoin. Uh, so we've generated a loss after income, income tax expense of 490.6 million. Uh, and they're, they're translating this over three months out of September 2020. Uh, EBITDA, so they have not made any money. Bitcoin, my, Bitcoin is a scarce digital asset that is created and transmitted through the operation of a peer-to-peer -peer network. You can read about Bitcoin somewhere else, but essentially Bitcoin and blockchain, many people believe it's the future of currencies. I do hold a portion of my net worth in uh, cryptocurrencies, not, not a significant portion, but I do hold a portion. And I was just kind of talking how Bitcoins work, hash rate and difficulty. Over time, it's going to take longer uh, it's going to take more work 
Bitcoin gets more difficult. There's a there's a, a difficulty curve that goes up every certain number of years. You know, an individual miner such as our company has a hash rate measured across the total number of units it deploys in the Bitcoin mining operation. Generally, a miner's expected success rate in solving blocks and earning Bitcoin over time is correlated with its total hash rate as a proportion of the total network hash rate. So the entire Bitcoin network it is about 140 EH per second as of September 30th, uh, 2021. And if we look, we can see that they've got uh, 0.7 of that. So essentially, maybe a quarter of a percent, you know, a quarter of a percent, slightly more than a quarter of a percent, maybe a third of a percent of all the Bitcoin mining power they've got going on right there. Uh, so, because they're saying right now 140, and they own a little bit less than one there. So, Bitcoin mining economics is talking about mining revenue, which is the Iris Energy hash rate divided by the network hash rate, and you've got that block reward of 6.25 BTC, uh, and it'll give you the number of blocks per year. The economics of Bitcoin mining are predominantly driven by a miner's proportionate share of the total network hash rate. The block reward, again, I don't want to turn this into a Bitcoin mining class, but essentially what they're, they're trying to break down how they make money, even though they don't make money, how they, how they use green power to make this. And this might be a play with someone like Apple who wants to make sure, you know, if Apple were to accept crypto in the in the future they may only want to accept clean crypto tim cook came out this morning and said he actually owned some crypto about two or three hours ago he said he owned some crypto so you know this is the economics of bitcoin are done by the price of bitcoin power consumption they're kind of the above the black rate is paid to miners on a fixed distribution schedule uh, 120 years which times miners <laughs> just transaction fees. So there's transaction fees as well as mining. We estimate that the market for Bitcoin mining is approximately 16 billion in 2021. This is calculated based on the annualized Bitcoin mining revenues from the nine months that enter September 2021, approximately 12 billion on blockchain.com. Limitate. Well, while the market for Bitcoin mining is a large grower, we believe some other miners may have a combination of the below limitations. Lack of the hardware supply. They have those contracts with a with the Bitcoin mining company, uh, Ant Miner, uh, and you, they're not utilizing green energy. Uh, they're saying other people, not not this company itself, not um, Iris Energy. Uh, lack of experience in use of modified shipping containers, retrofitted warehouses may be less efficient. So have not been able to vertically integrate solely reliant intermediaries for access to power. So they own the whole stack. This seems very much like a stronghold play. And it kind of makes me want to, look at stronghold real quick and kind of see how that's held up you know what it's actually held up real damn good uh so if we're looking at stronghold digital mining you could see i'm still up 44 percent this is a play super duper crazy similar to stronghold uh so sdig super duper crazy similar to stronghold in the scheme of things here um contracted mining hardware supply they have it with Bitman. They have that deal with Bitman to get what's going on. We understand, you know, they have hash rate capabilities, and they're trying to say, you know, their contract enabling hash. Wow, operating contract enabling. Wow. So they're they're saying they're going to go up to fifteen point two eh per second, and the whole world is only doing a uh, hundred forty right now. So. Uh, Again, these are forward-looking statements, and there's no promise that they're actually going to get this. But, uh, hey, we believe increasingly important Bitcoin can mine and utilize an environmental. So Bitcoin is kind of, I, I don't want to say this, but, you know, Bitcoin is essentially the new blood diamond. <laughs> That's the way it is, you know. People want to know where their Bitcoin comes from. And we even looked at an IPO. There was an IPO in Robinhood called Brilliant uh, that was uh, sustainable diamonds that were tied to the blockchain. Uh, which I did get some IPO shares up before this channel actually started. Uh, in addition, by targeting regions with existing excess renewable energy supply, we also hope to reduce the social and public policy risk. We, we, we want to get that bad, you know, we want to get the Elon Musk, Bitcoin uses power, Bitcoin's bad, we're not accepting it for cars anymore. Uh, so, you know, they're looking at data center development and grid uh, grid connections across North America, Western Europe, and Asia Pacific. I'm actually in South Florida. We do still have, uh, running South Florida, we still have nuclear power, which I know is not a renewable, but is actually a lot better than burning gas, burning coal, burning oil, burning all those other things like that. You know, We are building proprietary data centers that continue. So I, I can see them coming down to South Florida too in this area. 
uh, we're building proprietary data centers that continue to be refined through years of research and development to further optimize the operational environment and efficiencies, including stable uptime performance during high and low temperature periods. So uh, another thing is it's not just the power to run the machines. I'll tell you where I'm sitting right now because I do have the uh, the air conditioning off because I don't want that getting in background noise. It's actually quite noisy in here uh, and quite hot in here. So when you do mine crypto, you you do get the, the usage of power right from the from the computers themselves, which we've got one running up here, we've got a couple running off the camera shot from the computers themselves, as well as from the heat that is generated by the computer. We believe our purpose-built proprietary data centers may provide an operational advantage. So yeah, you know, if, if they're in cold climates, they can just open the door and that'll cool everything down. You don't have to pay those, uh, those prices. You see, that's the Canal Flats site. We saw that in the video a little bit earlier. That's the one that's in uh, British Columbia, Canada. So they have long-term contracts on the land, on the infrastructure, on the power supply. So they're trying to say, you know, we are set to go. We believe it's important to, okay, so we believe it's important to retain operational oversight of our infrastructure rather than outsource to third party providers. They want to own the entire stack. That is very useful to actually own the entire stack and to be geographically diversified. If someone does something like China or, you know, the U.S. bans Bitcoin mining or Canada says, sorry, no Bitcoin mining, you know, that that's an idea. So we've got energy market strategy, regulated markets, deregulated markets, you see, declining demand for power, increasing supply of power. Cost of electricity. All right, so the average variable cost of electricity for their current operations, remember, this is green, is uh, three cents, or let's say four cents, uh, US, four cents per kilowatt hour. Now, standard residential energy uh, is about 12 cents on average, uh, and that's not fully clean. It's about 12, 12 to 15 cents across the country. California is a little bit higher. Uh, but you can actually, in addition, we're playing a monthly charge as of assuming full load uptime. So they're running full load and they're paying an extra extra charge to keep that full load. Uh, so we are following the match. Uh, so with their expansion, they think they're going to be able to drop from four cents per kilowatt hour all the way down to one to two cents per kilowatt hour at some of the expansion sites through demand response. Regional community strategy. Our, our strategy is based upon entering markets that have a high penetration of renewables and where our operations can be set up to provide benefits to local energy markets, uh, establishing social license in the regions, which we operate as a core focus. For example, we believe we may help stimulate economic activity and employment. Yeah, they're, they're, this is a pitch for getting government incentives. That, that's, that, that's what this is. The you know funding provided for canal flats volunteer volunteer fire department. They're trying to say these are all the nice things we've done in British Columbia. Uh, mining pool participation. They contribute to a global mining pool, so ant pool, subject to their terms of service. In civil terms, ant pool calculates and pays us a share of our sustainably uh, of of our statistically expected global Bitcoin rewards. So they're in a pool, much like if you're using uh, say nice hash or you're using uh, etc ha uh, etc. Um, uh, what's, what's the name of that one? I'm, I'm losing the name of that one right now. Uh, that's unminable. What is the other one? I'm losing. Oh, uh, Ethermine. So if you're using NiceHash or using Ethermine, using anything like that. So they're just part of a pool. They want to develop the existing sites for growth opportunity and add new sites in the U.S., Asia Pacific markets where they believe they can get favorable energy agreements. Own developer renewal, energy generation, large potential platform. So what this seems to be is this seems to be a little different because they're not holding the Bitcoin like, say, a um, uh, MSTR, MicroStrategy. Uh, Michael Saylor, uh, who's the CEO of MicroStrategy, likes to just hold on to Bitcoin. That's what he does. And the company appreciates by holding on to Bitcoin. They're saying they're mining and they're cashing out and they're taking that U.S. or Canadian dollars and they're running, you know. And again, risk related to their business, they have a limited operating history with operating losses, and they've never turned a profit. <laughs> if the electricity goes out, guess what? You can't mine Bitcoin when the electricity goes out, unless the sun's shining, if you're using solar. Uh, but, you know, you any long-term outage will or would, could material impact our operations or financial performance. Several defects, uh, serial defects in our ASICs, so their mining machines that they're getting, they have those orders in place. That's the important thing to understand. There's a huge tip shortage, and look, the chip shortage was probably caused by the Bitcoin and, and the, you know, the, the COVID and, you know, it, it's, it's hard to get these chips in place. So uh, supply chain businesses subject to customer risk, developing a greenified infrastructure projects. 
highly competitive industry in a rapidly evolving sector. Our future success will, be, will depend significantly on the price of Bitcoin. So they're betting that Bitcoin's going to go up. A lot of people are betting that Bitcoin is going to be by the end of this year. Um, they're betting that Bitcoin is going to be a hundred thousand dollars. I mean, if we go crypto. If I just go to Bitcoin, I don't actually hold any Bitcoin in Robinhood, but we'll see. Bitcoin's fallen quite a bit today, down to $66,511. So, you know, it may take significant time and expenditure to grow their operations, and stuff might happen to Bitcoin in that amount of time. You know, ownership of Bitcoin is pseudonymous with the supply of accessible Bitcoin is unknown. There's a lot of people who might have gotten one of these back in the day, one of these little ledger Bitcoin wallets, and forgotten their password to the ledger bitcoin wallet so COVID 19 or any pandemic epidemic uh the loss of any of our management team or the ability to track the, these are pre copy paste from what we've seen in other s ones uh property damage that were not really covered by insurance okay so they were originally incorporated under the laws of new south wales australia november 6 2018 as iris energy limited and australian proprietor we converted into public company named iris energy limited uh and that's where they are they are an emerging growth company, so they won't be audited nearly as highly as these uh, non-emerging growth companies. That's what that's saying right there. And they are a foreign private issuer under the U.S. securities law. Even we no longer, even after we no longer uh, um, qualify as an emerging growth company, as long as we qualify as a private issue under the Exchange Act, we will be exempt from compliance with certain laws and SEC regulations, including those that are below. I'm going to put the document here so you can read it. Um, the offering. 8,269,000 ordinary shares or uh, 9,509,000 ordinary shares of the underwriters exercise their full option to purchase the additional shares there. So there's going to be use of proceeds. So we estimate the net proceeds from this offering after deducting the underwriting discounts and everything like that will be approximately 196 million or 226 million. Let's go with 200 million. Um, with, you know, saying they, they want with that all. We intend to use the net proceeds from our offering to fund our gross initiatives, including hardware purchases, acquisition, uh, purchases and acquisitions, and development of data center sites and facilities for working capital and general corporate purposes. If the underwriters exercise their full share option to purchase additional shares, we, okay, would have a material effect. On our use of proceeds, we have two classes of four voting shares, uh, the ordinary shares. So they're basically saying, again, they've got the those voting shares so nobody can get voted out from their own board of directors, which is what all these new companies are doing. But this is not a SPAC. This is actually a company going public here. So, again, we're looking again. I do love this chart uh, that they're showing a little bit down. Summary and historical financial information. We're just going to see that they've lost a boatload of money. That's all we're ever going to see here. They're going to build out. They're going to lose money. They're going to build out. They're going to lose money. Uh, and they're not holding crypto. That's the important thing to understand. They're not holding the Bitcoin currently. They're taking it. They're mining it. And they're selling it off right as they get it. So it might be an interesting pivot to see if they actually were going to hold it. But they don't seem to be uh, holding it there. You've got the total liabilities, total equity. They are losing a crazy amount of money. Crazy amount of money here. Net cash. Cash and affluence, the end period. They're spending a lot of money on these miners. Uh, risk related to our business. We have limited operating history uh, with operating losses as the business has grown. If we're unable to sustain greater revenues, then our operating costs will incur. Uh, we will incur operating losses, which can negatively affect. So let's just see. Yeah, any electricity outages. These are things that we've looked at. You know, return on. There is no assurance that we will be successful in achieving a return on your investment or meeting other metrics of success. Any long-term outage in power, we kind of looked at these. Critical failure of key electrical or data center equipment. Mining hardware may continue to have... Okay, our mining hardware suppliers have previously had and may continue to have operations in China. And China's economic and political social conditions, as well as changes in any government policy, laws, and regulations could have a material adverse effect on our business. Additionally, international trade policies with China continue to be in flux. A change in the policies could adversely affect our business and prospects in the operation, like we talked about before. Supply chain logistic issues for us and our suppliers may delay our expansion plans or increase the cost of constructing our infrastructure. 
Inflation's real. Our business is subject to the risk of a developing greenified infrastructure projects. We have an evolving business model and strategy. Interesting. Okay. Compile read. There's a lot of people that are mining, even individuals uh, who are mining as well. But, you know, we're nothing compared to these guys. We're a couple hundred dollars a week. They're a couple hundred dollars a second. Uh, any declines in what we mine? Ownership with Bitcoin is accessible. The, the, the accessible supply is unknown because there's a lot of people that have forgotten their passwords. Um, it may take a lot of time for them to grow. Okay. I think I've got a good idea here. What this is an interesting play is a lot of people want to put Bitcoin or, or any other, you know, maybe Ethereum or different things like that in their IRA account, in their in their Roth IRA account. Let me turn that off. You know, they might want to put it in their IRA or their Roth IRA account. Uh, what this is, is this is an interesting way to take a stock and to kind of be able to do that and put that in. This company loses money. I'm not going in with a winning company right here, knowing I'm going to get a winning company. What I'm going to do is I'm going to add some money so I can purchase this here. So let's just going to add that right there. Because I'm just going to buy it kind of because I think it's going to do exactly what Stronghold did. Stronghold Digital Mining was very, very similar um, to this. So, you know, if we take a look, and we're looking at IPO access. Let me jump back to the phone. If I'm looking at IPO access, we've got Stronghold right here, which you can go back. I'll, I'll link the video at the at the end. But we looked at this, and this was in a very similar. This was Stronghold was actually a power company who decided to go to crypto. I think this is a crypto company company that decided to get into power. Uh, I do think they're going to have to pivot eventually because Bitcoin's going to get harder and harder to mine. Um, but, you know, if we look at SDIG, Stronghold Digital Mining, it just went red from when we've been talking right now, but SDIG has done, you know, pretty well. Uh, so I don't mind actually going in and let's go ahead. And I like Iris Energy. I do think the price is very reasonable, unlike some of these other IPOs, like uh, Braze has a very, very high per share price. I do understand there's a market cap that's involved there. So, you know, it's the number of shares by the share price. Uh, so the market cap is kind of important. But in the Robinhood space and in the interest space, that it, this is kind of what we're looking at. So if I say I'm interested, I say I agree. I'm not any of those things. How allocation works. Ask and you shall receive a limited number of shares for available requests pulled randomly the morning of the company's IPO. See how we allocate shares? Okay. Investor demand, total available shares, not account age or value, not gold status. Still don't believe that. I've had a couple comments that have said that. But if I put in 100 shares, well, I don't have room for 100 shares right now. So if I put in, say, 25 shares, I move that up after some of these other IPOs finish. Uh, you'll see that you have to put you have to put down the max share price plus a 20% buffer. Or you can actually name your price. Oh, that's cool. We'll go with this one now. Uh, so we've got that max share price put in for 25 shares. That's $810. That's not much money. This is an interesting side bet. I would not bet the farm on IREN because they have no real history of profitability. And they're trying to go kind of green in the crypto space, which I think is quite good, but I think realistically, this could be an interesting one. And you'll see next up, we're in an allocation. I can say, got it. This is going to be an interesting play. It almost looks identical to Stronghold Digital Mining. And you can see Stronghold Digital Mining. If we look, let's look at the three months, you know, crypto's hot. Bitcoin's going crazy. You know, if we do have, we are kind of having, if we're, if we're, we're talking real time right now, we are kind of having a bit of a flash crash in Bitcoin right now. So, I mean, if if by the morning this happens, Bitcoin is back down to, say, 60,000 or something, that might be an indication that you, you don't want to be in here. So that'll kind of give you an idea. But remember what happens. I do want to remind you what happens again. The, uh, the evening before, between 9 p.m. and midnight and 11.59 p.m. Eastern time, you'll be asked to confirm. Now, there's actually a lot of IPOs that are coming up in the next few days, and I've put in uh, something for all of these that are showing up here. So what will happen is EXFY, which is Expensify, which should go tomorrow, uh, tonight, 
there will be a final price at about nine o'clock Eastern time. You have between nine o'clock Eastern time and uh, 11.59 p.m. to actually change the amount of shares you want to request there. So you can change the amount of shares you want to request, and then you'll find out uh, tomorrow morning, which is the 10th, uh, November 10th, 2021, uh, which is when this comes out, uh, you'll find out how many shares you did or didn't get. I think Black Back Blaze is uh, tomorrow as well. And Sweet Green, I've got a follow up video on Sweet Green, and we have a date now, so I will get that Sweet Green video out likely tomorrow. But that is a quick look. I do kind of like where it's going. I do see it very, 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 very similar to Stronghold Digital. So if you look at Stronghold Digital, if you take a look how Stronghold Digital is done, I do expect this company, uh, Iris Energy, to do very similar. This is Richard again from No Pants Profits, reminding you when you wear no pants. All you got left to lose is your shirt. Have a great one. See you around.